Ginger fish. I'm trying to get you a closer to Hey, yo. Ginger fish, how you doing? Hi. This is Tito from Shockwave Magazine in Baltimore here with Ginger Fish and Rob Zombie. Thank you so much for being here. Baltimore, big horns up. And um, we all have to thank you for your time. Tell me about Mayhem Fest. I just want to get that one out of the way because it's, you know, got, we've got bills to pay. Mayhem Fest, how, how, how's it treating you this year? I mean, it's great. I love it. Um, I mean, every day is different, obviously, so you have your good days and your bad days, but. It's only been, oh, what? Just past halfway point, I guess. And I say, you know, every show's been great. Um, there's a camaraderie with all the bands. Everyone's been hanging out afterwards. There's usually parties, there's different theme parties. A couple of nights back, they did a Teenage New Min Mutant Ninja Turtles party. Yeah. And everyone was dressed with the Donatello masks and everything else. And, um, Two nights ago, it was an 80s prom party. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, me and my tech actually spun for that. We did videos and we were throwing on the ceilings and craziness or whatever. And uh, everybody was dressed in drag, yeah, like yeah. a prom queen. So, like, that was crazy. But not everybody. It was 50 50. We had some prom kings and prom queens. But, uh, but fun night, definitely. Awesome. awesome. How, does, how does this year compare to like in past year when you're, because I know that Rob Zombie's been. You know, a veteran now when it comes to Mayhem yeah. Fest. Were, were you on? I wasn't on the last Mayhem okay. Fest with, with gotcha. Rob, so, gotcha. so this is new for me. New for you. Um, awesome. awesome. I know everyone from Mayhem Fest from play, playing in previous bands, but uh, I mean, that goes way, way back. So everyone's like family. Everyone's really. Because I read, you, I read, I've been, I've been doing my research. I know that you're, you're, you um, are, are down with all the uh, uh, Maryland, Maryland Manson, Rob, and you, you, you did Power Man 5000 a couple, a little bit. A that, little bit. that was just a crazy. I played keyboards on something. Um, I was just hanging out with the guys, and I said, "Come down to the studio, hang out." I went down, and I'm from Vegas. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, "We want to do a lounge thing, very Vegasy." So they just started jamming, and I sat down on the piano and started jamming. And I thought we were just practicing coming up with stuff. And the producer walked in and goes, yeah, we got it, we're done. I was like, I thought we were just practicing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And they just tracked it, and took it and sent it and put it on a record and boom, oh, thank yeah. you boys, you're done. So, what happened? Yeah, yeah. I just saw Sparta the other day, he came out to the show, and he's, he's, obviously I go way back with him and obviously. the history, so it's great. Speaking of Vegas, I read somewhere that you, um, you started playing at two, round two or so, and yeah, then was um, in Boston at that time. Yeah, and then, um, but that you played all the way up through college, and you know, I mean, you went to the University of, of, of Nevada. Oops, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you know, be. How can you talk about about that, the, the college years? What was that like? Were 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 were, 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 were you were you, in, were, were you entrenched to the person that you are today, or were you still? Um, well, when I went to college. Obviously, you get your parents telling you you got to be a professional, you got to do something with your life. I obviously want to be a musician. Mm -hmm. so I went to school for music. And I'd find myself sitting in class listening to these fat little dorky teachers tell me how to be a performer. And they, none of them were performing. None of them, you know, they weren't doing it themselves. So I was like, how can I listen to people tell me word of advice how to do something when they're not doing it? They were never capable of doing it. They're, they're the theoretically correct. They learned their music theory, but they didn't. They don't have any idea what it means to tour, or any idea what it means to really perform in front of a crowd and be motivated. They just, they just didn't get it. And I was constantly getting phone calls saying, "Hey, we want you to play. We want to do some stuff." So I would leave school and go play, and then come back to school, and then I get another call, "Hey, come do some gigs." And I go do a gig and go back to. The, so I was going in and out of school, and eventually I was just like, "Why do I?" I want to go to school to learn how to become a musician when I've got gigs, I'm working. So, so pretty much I've just been a full-time worker. I've always worked. Right out, of, right out of high school, I've always played, I've always worked in bands and stuff like that. You know, I like to do a lot of other things, but I always fall back on playing. That's just, that's the fallback. People say, don't have something to fall back on because that's what you'll end up doing. And music is what I fall back on because that's just what I end up doing all the time. Well, speaking of, of, of motivating crowds that you had mentioned a second ago, is there any any motivating crowds that you could, that have stood out that stood out in the past halfway point here in Mayhem, like from beginning to now? Any 
any crowds that have done these cities that have specifically kind of stood out, I'm like, wow, those guys are good. Not in Mayhem. I mean, Mayhem. Or Beyond. Yeah. Beyond. I mean, beyond. I can think of, I can think of past places where like, you know, Corpus Christi, which is Texas. Mm -hmm. Crowds must be insane. Just insane. Now describe monsters. insane, because you guys come from this. I mean, you're in this bubble of the Mansons and this. What is insane? I mean, what does that even like, mean for I, you guys? I wouldn't want to go in the crowd and just go to mosh pit. I mean, just crazy, big, mean-looking dudes, and just I'm not going anywhere near that place. So, you know, you've you've been the crowds or whatever that everyone's looking to fit in. You know, it gets weird when you see the crowds and the crowds look weirder than the band. And I've been in that situation where you look out in the audience and say, like, whoa, some people are going way over the top trying to be crazier than bandits. It gets to a point where, you know, no matter how hard you try, you can't top the next guy. You know, everyone's going to be nuttier or crazier or wilder. And it kind of goes all the way back to where almost like normal then becomes the weird new crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and normal in the, in, the, in, the, in the quotations. That's what I always said. Oh, you know, <laughs> got to do a Christian record. You know, start doing a gospel record, a Christian. You know, it's like, that would freak people out. You know? <laughs> that would be shocking. That would yeah. be shocking. <laughs> new CD. New CD. Rob Zombie, new CD. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. What what um what could we expect? I, mean, I love listening to the CD. When I recorded the CD, I didn't know how, how it was going to turn out. Because when I recorded it, it was just like riff A, riff B, you know, let's jam riff C. So I didn't know where it was going to go. There were no lyrics at the time, so I wasn't sure what the, the thought or the context was going to be in the songs. Which is hard because I like to play around a singer. I don't want to step on a singer's toes. So I don't like really playing too much and then a singer wants to put words right there and I'm like being sloppy. But I kind of like to play around a singer. But with this recording process, I just. Uh, they give me a call and say, hey, we want to fly out to Rob's Ranch. That's where Rob, uh, we recorded in Connecticut. Um, can you call your drum company, Premier, have them send a drums, um, drum set out here? So Premier shipped a random a bunch of drums over there, you know, I was getting on a plane and I called, I was like, the drums arrived. We haven't seen any drums, there's no drums around. And I flew there, and I was only supposed to be there a week. I get there, like, there's no drums yet. Like, they said the drums are here. No, there's no drums. I said, Rob's, Rob's place is so big. I searched, I went around the property, went around the property, and I found the drums sitting on a porch. <laughs> Like, you know, a truck driver came by and dropped them on a porch. <laughs> Ding dong. Yeah, nobody Ding knew dong. they were there. So I, had my, I had my drums sitting there, you know, boxes on a porch, whatever, in a place nobody even knew they existed yeah, until yeah. I went and searched. <laughs> in a pitch dark with a, you know, iPhone flashlight searching, like, hey, here's some boxes. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I love it. I love, I love that when I play some of the new songs, I feel like I'm playing some of the old songs. Um, there's certain certain where I'm like, you know, this is very reminiscent of this, and this is very reminiscent of that. So uh, there's a very old school feel to the new album, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure will please some people. Other people are like, oh, you know, give us something new, give us something new. Yeah. And then other people want you to rehash old stuff. But there's a little of both with the new album. There's definitely places the band's never gone before. And there's definitely songs that have touched on history. So. Touching on the ones and places that you haven't gone before, can you give us an example? And I, well, give us a, 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 is it more in topic or in tonality? Is it in the format of the songs? Uh, of, the one in the places that you haven't gone. In the places haven't that, gone before. In, yeah, in the, in the, you say the album was split. Yeah. Almost split well, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't around the old projects, so I wasn't really around when it happened to know how they went about stuff. But, uh, I think there's a, there's probably a song or two on this album that's more programmed than the old stuff was. I think it's you know, more drum machine oriented on some things that weren't before. And then on the other aspect of it, I think there's songs that are played very much like the old songs were played. So there's two opposites in that and in that aspect. You know, one minute you're, you're talking about a program, next minute you're talking about really playing. So they're definitely different. When you're in studio, and when you're in the studio, with Rob Zombie at his ranch. Tell me about it. Is that a pressure cooker? Or are you? Because um, I know, I know. Is that? 
I know it's one thing to be on stage. It's another thing to be, you know, friends. Yeah, with I'm not a studio guy, so that's yeah. Studio is a pressure point for me because I'm a live guy. Mm -hmm. I just I get out and I play, and I need to feed off the audience. And you know, if I drop a stick or I screw up, that's just something that happens as part of the show, or whatever. Uh, in the studio, you don't do that. You don't drop a stick and just pick one up and keep going. You know, you screwed up, you start over again. Everything's so perfect. Uh, and yeah, I just I've never been that guy to be so perfect. I'm, I kind of go around saying I'm the Keith Moon of this band. I kind of screw up. Everyone's so perfect, and everyone's. I mean, John Fire's a session guy, and he's just like so on everything all the time. It's like it's very daunting to try. And, yeah, just trying to keep up with him. It's, it's ridiculous. That explains why he's so nice. You just plug him. You think the Apple makes him, or is he an Apple? Yeah, he's so nice because he, he doesn't have that human quality to be mean or dark. I mean, because they just didn't program that into him. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I already the robot. Yeah. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, um, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Two little quick quick questions that kind of off the wall. Who could kill anybody? Who would it be? Who would you hide the body? That is a good question. I think the number one rule with that is you don't tell anybody. You never admit it. Well, <laughs> the second, yeah, the second person, the second most likely person, the second likely person I'd probably have to kill, I would say, would be Marilyn Manson. But with that, I would have to take credit for you. Yeah. So, and I know that fans are gonna kill me for that. One. And if I killed Manson, I'd say like, you know, I did it. Sorry, it had to be done. I didn't mean to, but I'm not, I'm not killing anybody. It's not gonna happen. No, that's but what would you do with all the mans and bits, all the mans and pieces, all the, the, the mans and chunks? What would you do with the body? Oh, now we're getting deep. Yeah, we're getting deep, is... deep, and you're getting back into my psychic. Like, no, do I, I write mean... a book? Do I write a movie? Yeah. Whatever. I've actually thought this well out a million times over, and I actually eat the parts of each band member that they were so stuck up. With. Oh. Oh, right. right. That's that's right. where, and now I, I'm admitting to telling you what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> so but when your family members go missing, look I've for them in your poop. Each member, <laughs> look for them in your each, poop. Each member, <laughs> each member that's pissed me off, I have a piece of them in my gut. So there's no evidence pr to prove it. There's no. You know, it's tidy, leave it clean, eat the, eat the, everything possible, bye bye, gone. Cool. Out of, out of, and, and, and I only know this because I'm a little bit of a geek, but tell me, what is it, uh, what is it from, uh, about Albert Fish that, 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 that grabs your attention to the point where you would wrap that around the person, the, the, yeah. the, the entity that you are today? Yeah. What is I, it I that, mean, that, 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 that goes that goes to Manson again too, because he came up with that. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know the fascination with it, be it that people like to say I'm a pedophile. And Albert Fish, Albert Fish was a pedophile, mm -hmm. so they kind of put they correlate those things together, which I'm not a pedophile. Not a pedophile. Not, not a pedophile. Not a pedophile. <laughs> Don't go near underage people. So. Well, seriously, I really, really, really appreciate it. Is there anything that you would add to make this even more colorful than it's already been? Because, again, I'm just honored that you would give me the time. Yeah, no, I'm, like I said, I'm used to drummers to be seen and not heard. So yeah. anything out of my mouth, I feel, is one word too many. Because drummers really... Supposed to keep the trap shut. Yo, the background, yo, the background. <laughs> Which, I mean, I know there's a lot of bands out there, the drummers are you know, yeah. talk, 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 talk. You know, it's just not me. I've never really been you know, Do you all take, do you all, do you all like, do, do, um, divvy it up when it comes to, um, to speaking to the fans and being and, and, and to the, 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 uh, the entities? And, <laughs> With the zombie uh, camp now, everyone does their part, you know, because it's a team. Everybody, I mean, everybody in the zombie camp 
I mean, we're all on one bus. Most bands are all split up in separate buses, and they just don't hang together. The zombie camp, we're all on one bus. I mean, the, the band, the wise, everybody, we all hang out as a family. And, uh, I mean, every, yeah, everybody's got to do four to six press things today, and it's just, just all split up equally. Everyone just, you know, contributes and does their thing. And each person does certain things so well that, you know, the others let them do that. Like, if we need a photo taken, well, Rob takes good photos, but Piggy has a professional camera, and he comes out and takes a lot of the photos. So, I pretty much spend most of my time doing video stuff, doing video work, but that goes into my VJ and stuff like that. Um, I mean, John's a writer, so he just writes all day, that's all he does, and stuff like that. But everyone does their part, and uh, things get done that way. It's just, it's easy, I guess, because you can put one person in charge of everything, and there's just not enough time in the day to do it. So, it's a different, uh, it's a different world. Definitely. Well, what, what do you, what's your take on on fans? How, 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 um, how well do do you interface with fans a lot? Um, or do you I mean, I've met from day one. I've met thousands. of Thousands and thousands of fans because I'm always the one that's hovering around before the show or hovering around after the show. You know, I would always be the one signing the autographs by the box. I'd be always the one like, walking up front saying hi to you and stuff like that. And again, being a drummer, it didn't matter how nice you were or how nice you were. Uh, how many people you spoke to? It was always like, when's Twiggy coming out here? You know, when's so and so coming out here? It was. It's never good enough. So it doesn't matter who you are. Someone's gonna. It's not gonna be enough for somebody, and they're gonna be like, I want this. I want that. That comes with fans too. Whatever you know, you, you talk to them. You're nice to them. Next thing you want, they want your phone number. They want your email address. Now with the social social world, everyone's twittering and facebooking and Instagramming and. You know, it's just a weird time right now where everyone thinks they have the right to talk to everybody and they're like pissed off at you if you don't respond to them. Hey, can you give me a retweet? You know, I want to it's my birthday. It's like, okay, like you have time. There's 20,000 people who has birthdays today or whatever, but you deserve a retweet right now, this very moment. This isn't enough time. You know, so I said, you can be as nice as you possibly can be to everybody in the world and there's still someone's going to say you're an asshole. And that sucks. You know, it really sucks. But, and the, the strange thing about that is like people like Rob go way out of their way to apologize to people that, that you know, he didn't have time for the first time. It's, it's amazing. It amazes me. It's, it's shocking, you know, how much this camp cares about everybody. Um, yeah, this, and I sleep more than anyone else in the band. I was going to say, there's not enough time in the day. you got to sleep sometime. The other guy, I don't know when I sleep. The other guys are like up at six in the morning working and you know, if they're not, you know, Rob's working on writing a script or doing this or doing that. Every, everybody's running around and John's on the phone talking about getting his kids, you know, picked up somewhere and this is going on, that's going on. This is Have you ever wondered if maybe they're vampires and they just wait until you go to sleep so they can do their vampire stuff? No, I, I, I've gone through that whole realm, obviously. Living in New Orleans and stuff, you know, you got that, you got that whole... Uh, Era of people, my best friend that had to do the uh, interview with Vampire, get all dressed up and do the whole. You know that was the 90s. You know, so you're too tan now to be a, to be a vampire. No, but that's the new thing. It's uh, it's vampires that take tan vampires. That's the thing I didn't get about the Twilight. The, the Twilight, thing. they hang out, they sparkle <laughs> in the sunlight. <laughs> Thank you, seriously. It's been off. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. It's uh, you're a great guy. Thanks. And um. Be careful out there. Baltimore says thank you. Shockwave says thank you. Thanks. Yeah.